Hello and welcome fellow Wasteland survivors, I'm Dean and in today's video I'm going to be showing how you can build a pretty cool little fireplace in your settlement without the use of mods. Now we all know that mods have quite a huge selection of fireplaces. Last week Lady HA put out a video showcasing a few different mods and their fireplaces. But if you're like me and you don't use mods, then we're kind of limited to what we can actually build. Really, all we got is a fire pit. There are a lot of ways one could build a fireplace without using mods. For example, we're at Oberlin Station at our hunting lodge build. We're using this fireplace to smoke our meat in the meat house. Now this isn't the build that we're going to do today. The one I have in mind is much smaller and a lot more practical. Here's a quick preview on the fireplace that we're going to build today. Now there's quite a few reasons why I chose this one. First of all, it's really not too complicated to build. There are a few steps that you got to do. But I really like how realistic this fireplace looks because the fire is set in and behind the wall. It's not sitting in front of the wall and taking up a bunch of room inside of our build. Also, this build is very practical in a couple of different uses. The first part of this video, I'm going to show how to build it in a building that you're getting ready to build. And then for the last part of the video, we'll see how to put the same thing in to a pre-existing structure. And we'll do that at Taffling Boathouse. First thing you're going to want to do is lay your foundation out, or at least a few floors around where you want to build your fireplace. Now I've chosen to build my walls facing inwards. Whether they're facing inwards or outwards, it doesn't matter. The steps that you're going to see will still be exactly the same, whichever direction your wall is facing. All right, we're going to replace our concrete foundation back, and then we're going to get out a concrete wall and snap it where the door was at. Now, there's a couple of reasons why. First of all, we need to lift the floor up so we can create a new snap point for the base of our fireplace. We'll add a concrete pillar onto the front of it, and now we'll pop the concrete pillar up out of the floor re-snap our wall back on and now we have a new snap point one floor thickness above the floor we were just standing on now the second thing that we need the concrete wall for is to snap the floors on that we're going to use for the base of the fireplace and we need them to be two concrete walls thick out away from the build we're going to use these curved concrete floors. So now we got one out. We can use it as a marker. We can store our wall. And you can see it's two concrete walls thick away from our build. We can snap another floor on. And just like that, ladies and gentlemen, we already have the base to our fireplace. Now you might be thinking to yourself, oh, well, we got to get the door back in. Well, don't worry about it. It'll snap right back in. It doesn't collide or give you any problems hitting these floors. All right, let's build the sides and the top of our fireplace. We're going to use these green foot lockers to do it. If you'll stand still when you're putting them out, they will stack on top of one another absolutely perfect. Three high. The fourth one will actually be red and it won't let you place it down. You're just a little too far from the floor. Now we'll separate our stacks so that we can work on them a little easier. Now pro tip here ladies and gentlemen, whenever you're moving any of these containers, don't turn side to side like I'm doing right here. If you'll only move back and forth and side to side without turning, 
these containers will stay completely lined up with one another even when you're moving them around. It'll make it so much easier when you go to put the container back on top of the stack. The next thing that we'll want to do is get a few more of these foot lockers out and place them on top of the two foot lockers that we took off of our stacks. And we're going to kind of make an L shape pattern by doing this. Now this part that I'm doing here is a little bit more tedious. We're going to have to line these foot lockers up with one another so they're as straight as we can possibly get them. But once again, if you use the tip that I mentioned just a second ago and only move side to side or forwards and backwards, don't turn side to side. It'll make lining these up a lot easier and it's not as hard as you think it might be. So I'm going to take a few seconds, get them just right. I'm checking the edges and the corners out to make sure that they're going straight up and down. And once I get one side done, I'll move over to the other side and line that one up too. Now after I've lined these up, I'm going to get a couple of more foot lockers out. And I'm going to place them beside the ones that we just lined up. We need our top to be a little thicker than the thickness of one of these containers. Now keep this in mind, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see this several times in this video one side of the container or any object in the game has a better or worse collision area or side to it. So you want to make sure that you're putting these containers on exactly the same way I am. That way you don't have collision issues and you can get them as close to one another as possible. Alright, now that we've got our two foot lockers stacked on top, I'll grab the bottom foot locker, bring it over, and realign it back up on top of our stack. Once again, notice that I'm not turning side to side when I'm moving the object. By doing this, once again, it just makes it so much easier to push or pull your item to help you line it up. And it just doesn't take very long to do this. Once I've got one side lined up where I think it's pretty good, I'll go over and repeat the process on the other side. All right, next we're going to need a couple of carpets and a mat. So I'm going to go ahead and pull a mat out, and I want to show you what I mean by a more generous collision side on one side of the object or the other. If you notice with this mat, as I spin it around, it'll turn red certain ways that I have it in there. What you want to do is you want to spin it until it fits perfectly inside of the door and it seems kind of centered. Also, you'll want to check it up against the wall. Here we can see that it's red, so we need to spin it until it turns green so that way it has a generous collision side in front of it. And then we're just going to check it back in the doorway again to make sure that it's going to work. Once we've done this, we can pull it back and we can get a few other carpets out. Now the carpets that I've chosen are the very first ones in the category. Also, we're going to want to check these up against the wall so that way we find out which side of the carpet is the most generous side. We're going to want that one facing inwards to the mat when we put it on there. Now I'm going to take our containers over and I'm going to line them up on this carpet so that it kind of is balanced or centered inside of the black lines around it. We're going to basically be using it for looks, so we want it fairly centered up and the carpet not offset. Now we can go ahead and use the carpet to move everything over to the mat. I'm using the black line on the carpet to line it up with the mat, and I'll do both sides the exact same way. This way we can try to get it as straight as we can across the front of our foot lockers. Once I've got it in place, you can see that they are all nice and straight. Everything's joined together, looks really good, and they're carpeted on the mat now. 
Now we're going to need a second mat and I'm going to bring it over and I'm going to make sure I'm choosing the right side of the mat to get as close to the foot lockers as I possibly can. Also I'm going to want to make sure that it will set on the other mat and it will carpet glitch all together. Now I'm going to pull out a fire put pit, put it on a mat, and what you need to do is spin this around until you can target the mat. Once you've targeted the mat, you can bring it over and set it on the other mat in the center. And that's really how quick and simple it is to actually create the fireplace. All right, the next thing that we're going to want to do is go find a wall mounted shelf. Any of the variances will work for this. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Next, we're going to get into the light section and pick out a light that we can place on the bottom of this shelf. Now, keep this in mind, ladies and gentlemen. You can really use any light here that you would like to. For example, this longer light. If you put that over top of the fireplace, you'll have you would have a lot more shelf room. You could also use the wall mounted lights. Now if you chose to use one of these lights you wouldn't actually need the wall mounted shelf because the light itself attaches to the wall. So if you're going to use one of these you don't need the wall mounted shelf. But the one that we're going to use is this shorter light so we're going to need the wall mounted shelf to attach it to. And now we'll take a few seconds here and try to line it up the best we can with the front of the shelf. We're also going to make sure that it's even or level from side to side. We don't want it sticking out too far one way or the other. All right, the next thing that we're going to want to do is cover up part of our door. And I like to use pictures to do that. Now really anything will work as long as it's as big as the frame or bigger. For instance, this picture right here. Realistically, at this point, you could be completely finished with your fireplace and it would look good but we're going to do a few extra steps in case people want to go the extra distance on it. Now you could just snap this picture right up there, put the wall mounted shelf down below it, insert your fireplace and you're done. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and flip the picture around so that we don't see the artwork. And we'll just go ahead and use a concrete pillar and an electrical conduit so that we can place it in when we're ready for this. And I'll just have everything set up ready to go. We've got our fireplace built, our wall mounted shelf, and our picture. Now the next thing that we need to do is set up for something that might look like a smokestack. This is optional, ladies and gentlemen. You don't have to do this. You may like the look of it or you may not. It's entirely up to you. So what we're going to do is snap a concrete wall to the top of our door. We're going to add in our fireplace as well. Now it doesn't have to be straight. We're just going to use it as a marker. Once we've got it in, we'll take the doorway out and we're going to snap a half a wall to the back side of the concrete wall that we just put up. We'll add a couple of concrete pillars heading down to the ground. Now we can go ahead and select this pillar and lower it down until we get it level with the top of our fireplace. And this may take a few times to adjust until you get it just right. But you can always add in a wall and see where you're at. To get some of the concrete pillars to poke inside of the wall outwards where we can see it, we'll need to offset it by half the thickness of a concrete wall. So what I'm doing is I'm using a pillar and I spun it around until we can get a half a wall to fit on it in the opposite direction. Now all I need to do is just snap a couple of concrete pillars up and we've offset our wall half the thickness of a concrete pillar, uh, concrete wall, excuse me. 
Now I'll just set up a couple of markers so that later on we can snap in those particular concrete pillars. Now we'll group select our picture. We'll bring it over and we'll place it into the doorway the best that we can. Now it might not hurt to measure how high your fireplace is before you do this because if you don't get it right you're going to have to redo that over again. Now also we'll grab our light that's attached to the wall mounted shelf and we'll make sure and lift it up and float it on the shelf until nothing but the light is seen both top and bottom. Now we'll bring this over and place it in here where we think it's about the height of our fireplace. Once again, you may want to put something on the wall to mark where you need everything to be. It makes it a lot easier. And we've got it lined up. We can bring our fireplace over and try to get it in as straight as we can. I'm going to use the door frames and the side lockers to do it. Also remember, this is on a carpet. So if you get it wrong, just grab the carpet and readjust it till you get it where you want it. And yes, I've got it a little too far into the wall. I don't want it in that far. So we're going to pull it out a little bit. And I think I'll just bring it up until these carpet corners touch the uh, metal frame around our floor. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Once again, at this point, you could actually be finished with your fireplace. But since we're actually adding in some extra effects, this is why we went the extra step. And we can't get it in as long as it's a half a wall. We're going to need concrete pillars. And there we go. Now it looks like, kind of like, a chimney going up inside of our build. Also, what's really cool about this is you can actually snap roofs on without taking those concrete pillars out. Also, on the back side, you could build on extra steps to make it look like the outside of the fireplace. Create a chimney and a base around the fire itself. And we're seeing that kind of in fast motion here. Now this is where you could really get creative if you wanted to. There's so many different ways that you could do this. If you wanted to, you could add on some extra concrete pillars to make it a little higher so it looks like your chimney's farther up in the air. You could also do them different ways. Another way that I tried it was by inserting concrete pillars into one another to give me a cool little pattern and not make my chimney as high as the one that we just saw. And here you can see that we've got a pretty cool pattern to our chimney. All right, now that our fireplace is completed, let's check it out and see how we done. Now one thing I'd like to let everybody know is this really only took about an hour to create. So if you try to do something like this, it shouldn't really take too long to do it. And it won't be a whole afternoon or day project. All right, let's move over to Taffling Boathouse and see how we can put the same build into a pre-existing build. What I've done here is I've already created everything that we've seen in this video so far. All I'm doing right now is I'm adding on a few extra concrete pillars to help give me a chimney effect. When I place this inside of the building, I want them to stick out of the ceiling to look like a chimney. So everything here is already done up to this point. We've already got our doorway in, our picture in reverse in front of the door. We have our foot lockers created into our fireplace, and our light is floating on or setting on a wall mounted shelf. Everything is done here with the exception of bringing the foot lockers in which is the actual part of our fire. Um, now what we're gonna do is get rid of the floors so that we can group select everything and take it into the build. Also if you'll notice I'm using a half a ladder to do this. To get this to work better 
the half a ladder is a great way for this to work. If you're using a concrete pillar, you may not get it to turn green, even bringing it inside of the build. All right, we'll bring it in. I've chose it to go inside of this little pooched out area that has some windows in it. Now, realistically, ladies and gentlemen, you could place this anywhere you wanted to inside of a pre-existing build. If you want to use a doorway, say like the one that's on our right-hand side, you could go ahead and do that. And once we've placed it in, you can see just how easily that was to bring over here and place inside of this build. We just lined it up in that little area, and now it's as simple as just adding in our fireplace. And just like that, we now have the same exact thing inside of a pre-existing build. Once again, you can build this so many different ways. So I really hope you guys and gals take advantage of that and try some different ways. You can get a lot of cool looks out of the tips and tricks that we've seen in today's video. And once again, we can just adjust it wherever we want because everything's carpeted. And the way that we carpeted this build, it really has a good look to it, like it's part of the uh, sides or the edges of our fireplace. That's why we took a few minutes and lined those uh, foot lockers up on the carpet so they weren't like offset or mismatched. Yep, that really looks good. And if you don't like the concrete pillars, just take them out. It'll still look good with a picture behind it facing forward showing a design of your favorite picture. And now it's all up to decorating. Well, that's it for today's video, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all very much for stopping in, hanging out with me. I really do appreciate it. Everybody have a great day. And just like always, until next time, please stay safe and peace.